This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I definitely feel like a bit of a Scrooge today because we're talking MLB betting and we're talking some money lines and strikeout props that I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And of the three strikeout props, all three are unders on good pitchers, which means I am rooting against those guys getting strikeouts. Please don't tell Pitching Ninja next time he is on that I have betrayed him by betting unders across the board. But I feel like there's value in all three. We're getting plus money in all three. And I've got them projected below that mark. So it's not fun to root against some legendary arms, but that's what we're going to have to do for tonight in our, uh, in the strikeout department. So we'll break down who those are, why I'm on them for today. And also a couple of money lines that I like for tonight over at FanDuel. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's part of the FanDuel podcast network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel research here to break down Tuesday's MLB betting slate break. Down my favorite reads for tonight over at FanDuel Sports. But before we dive in, though, quick reminder we did talk about NFL week number one for the first time yesterday. Talked about a couple of spreads, a money line, and a total I like right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook for week number one in the NFL. If you want to find that, check it out on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. And as always, you can find these shows on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV Plus as well. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from the spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and president select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in, uh, ooh, I lost my spot, in Arizona. Uh, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Louisiana or in uh, Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050. For 24-7 support in Massachusetts, call 1-877-8-HOPE and wire text hope and Y in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9-18-23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and a current form of payment. Commercial use excluded. Let's dig in now to some bets I like across Major League Baseball for tonight, beginning with the money lines that I like over at FanDuel for today. And the first one is going to be in this Guardians versus Dodgers matchup, and this number moved quite a bit. It was the Guardians plus 184 earlier on. It is currently plus 168. So the implied odds of plus 168 are 37.3%. Looking at my model for today. I've got the Guardians still above that at 41%. So a bit of value, but as always, make sure you shop around see if you can get that plus 184 out there somewhere because maybe there's a book that is behind and still giving us a better number on this Guardians team. Now, the reason I was on this one to begin with is that my model is not a big fan of Noah Syndergaard, who will start today for the Guardians, and it's not a fan of him despite the fact this is a revenge game, which matters more than anything else. The Guardians offense has finally been competent and their active roster now is a 99 WRC plus against righties for the full season. Guardians are facing Bobby Miller, who has a 3.38 ERA since he started to lean on more forcing fastballs and fewer sinkers. And his peripherals are good as well, but 
just a tough number to get to for a team that's on the road in the Dodgers against a non dumpster fire offense. And the Guardians still have a shot at the postseason. It's like 9%, but they could still make the postseason. So they're going to push, they're going to play their guys. And I think that does matter quite a bit. So plus 168 is still a value for me. Again, 37% implied odds. I've got them at 41% to win for today. So still a value, but sh shop around. See if you can find a, a 180 out there somewhere, a 174, I think I've seen in some spots as well. See what the best number you can get on the Guardians is because I'm still showing value with where they're at at FanDuel, but maybe you can get a better number on them somewhere else as well. Other money line I like for tonight also ties into the different bet uh, in the strikeout department for today. That is the Red Sox money line taking on the Astros. They are currently minus 152, uh, sorry, plus 128 at FanDuel Sportsbook are the Red Sox taking on the Astros. And I do like the Red Sox at that number. And I'm not super far off in the market here. Uh, I've got the Red Sox win odds at 46.8%. Their implied odds are 43.9%. This is Tanner Houck's first start off the eye out, which does leave open some uncertainty with this Red Sox team because we had not seen him since he had that, that facial injury. But he did pitch really well in his three rehab starts, and I think that does matter to an extent. Can you get some strikeouts? Can you prevent walks? Can you look good? And Houck definitely did that. I think it's also reassuring that Hauk is not coming off of an elbow injury, a forearm injury, a lower body injury that could linger. It was it was to his face, which which stinks for him, obviously. But like from a an injury progression perspective, it doesn't worry me as much as some injuries to red flag situations would. How before he went on the IL had an ERA above five, so the results were not good. And you can explain that because he was letting up a pretty high hard hit rate, and that's that's a skill to suppress hard contact. It's not a skill he possessed. But if you look at baseball savants, their expected ERA, I think, does a good job of encapsulating hard contact and kind of accounting for that. And they have his expected ERA of 3.92. So even with the hard contact being acknowledged, we can still expect some positive regression from Hauk as he comes off the IL. So this is Justin Verlander. He has had good results, but... He does let up a lot of balls in play. So I agree with the model here and that the Red Sox are undervalued at plus 128. And I do think that they are a good team to turn to for today. So the two money lines are like the Red Sox money line at plus 128 and the Guardians at plus 168 uh, for tonight. Now, I mentioned that the Red Sox money line does tie into one of the strikeout props. And you probably heard the wordage there where Justin Verlander is subject to variance because the balls in play he allows. And obviously that'll correlate to a strikeout prop under. So let's take out, uh, check out Verlander. And this number has moved a lot too. Uh, under five and a half is now minus 102. It's previously 124. So a lot of movement there. Let's talk through this one though, because I do still show value on under five and a half, even at minus 102 at FanDuel Sports. But he is going very deep in games. So that's why I'm a bit uncomfortable with this number having moved as much as it is because he can go 106 pitches if he wants to. But in 11 starts with fewer sliders, Verlander has gone over five and a half strikeouts um, just five times. So the under hitting at a 55% clip here. He did have one big strikeout game with the Astros across three starts, seven strikeouts there, but just six total strikeouts in the other two starts with the Astros. Boston's active roster has a 20.5% strikeout rate against righties so far this year. So I still think that there is value on the under five and a half at minus one or two. Now I say that because I have Verlander projected for 4.8 strikeouts tonight. That means that he's going to go under five and a half uh, at a clip larger than the just over 50% implied at minus one or two. So again, as always, do you want to give the caveat to shop around? See if you can find a book that is lagging behind on uh, the early, the movement towards the under on Verlander, but I would shop around and still, if Fandle's the best number you can get at minus 102, I would still be okay with that. Now, obviously, a Verlander under does correlate with the money line for the Boston Red Sox. This could be a spot where you want to check out potentially a same-game parlay on both those. Uh, if you were to do that together right now at Fandle Sportsbook, those tied together is plus 273 with just those two bets tied together. I think that's fine. Uh, again, my personal preference is to always play things straight up unless there is a heavy draw, a heavy incentive to tie them together. I think this is a very defensible route, though. So if you want to go same game parlay, 
you got some kind of boost for a same game parlay or something like that, I do think that this is a route you could go with the Red Sox money line and Verlander under five and a half at plus 273. But for me personally, I'll take the single legs Verlander are under five and a half minus 102 and the Red Sox money line at plus 128. Let's take a look at the other uh, strikeout props I like for tonight over at FanDuel. Hopefully these have not moved as well. As mentioned, there's a couple of strikeout prop unders on pitchers I like and might be surprising to have Grayson Rodriguez in that department. Uh, but Rodriguez has pitched really well so far this year, and I've been very impressed with him. And I've been on the Orioles money line when, I, when Rodriguez has pitched. So uh, there have been times where I've been pretty high in him. But tonight, his strikeout prop at FanDuel Sportsbook is at six and a half strikeouts, and the under is minus 160. So that's definitely a situation where you are paying a price. Uh, The implied odds there, over 60%. So keep that in mind for sure. But at under six and a half, I do like uh, Rodriguez at minus 160. I would also take under five and a half. Uh, I was plus 124 this morning. Uh, Under five and a half, I would take that as well if you get that number instead and you want to go the plus money obviously you want the buffer with the extra strike out there if you can get it but i think either route is okay with rodriguez the reason we are here is he's looked awesome since coming back up and I, I need to acknowledge how good he has been but there's still haven't been a huge number of strikeouts with rodriguez i'm looking at a nine start sample here which does include three stars before he got sent back down to triple a but if look at those three starts plus the six since he's come back up his highest strikeout mark is six. And again, his strikeout prop here is six and a half. So a bit confused about that. He's pitched really well, but it hasn't been due to a crazy, crazy number of strikeouts. Now, part of the reason why this number could be high is because he has got a lot of whiffs, a lot of swinging strikes, and that strikeout number could rise. But to put it at six and a half to me is honestly a bit wild. The Jays active roster has a 21.6% strikeout rate against righties. So I like Rodriguez a lot. I am very okay being on the Orioles when he's on the mound. I've been there before. We'll probably be there at some point again. I think I've had strikeout overs for Rodriguez as well, but I'm not sure if it'll translate to a ton of strikeouts right now. I have Rodriguez projected for 5.2 strikeouts. So With this number increasing to six and a half, I think there's a lot of value in the under at minus 160. Again, if you want to go with plus money under five and a half, I took that personally earlier on today. Uh, I think it was plus 120 when I took it at five and a half. Obviously, there's movement towards the over here or else Fandle would not have budged up to six and a half. So maybe I'm on the wrong side here. Maybe I'm misreading the Rodriguez situation. But again, he has not gotten to seven strikeouts yet with this new approach and a nine start sample. He has not gotten this since he came back up. So I'm a bit confused, honestly, why this number increased, but we'll go with the under six and a half at minus 160 for Grayson Rodriguez. Final strikeout prop I am eyeing for tonight is in a game that was rescheduled from yesterday, the Angels and the Reds. That is out West. Lucas Giolito is taking on the Reds. His strikeout prop is currently at seven and a half. And the under for him is minus 144. It was six and a half earlier on, uh, plus 120. So both Rodriguez and Giolito numbers have moved up for some reason. Uh, I'm on the under for both of them. They both gone up. The Verlander one went down. So with the market on Verlander, apparently against the market on Giolito and Rodriguez. But as with Rodriguez, I would look around for Giolito. If you can find under six and a half, uh, plus 120 or so, I think that makes a lot of sense. Under seven and a half to me, also makes a lot of sense, even if it is minus 144, which is where it is at right now at FanDuel Sports. But let's talk through this one and why I think that number is honestly kind of outrageous uh, for Giolito. I haven't projected for 6.3 strikeouts here. And players projected at 6.3 strikeouts tend to go under 6.5 at more than a 50% clip. So bumping that number up to seven and a half, even if it's minus 144, uh, the implied odds there at minus 144 are 59%. Even there, we're going to be on the under pretty easily. Focusing in on the past nine starts with Giolito, since he started to throw more changeups once again, Giolito said the over on six and a half strikeouts. Let's put it down there. Put it one strikeout lower. He said over six and a half strikeouts three times in nine starts. And he's failed to get even six strikeouts in all the others. So he's had five strikeouts or fewer in six of nine starts. 
And for some reason, his strikeout prop is at seven and a half for tonight. And a lot of those starts did come on the road. He does get a boost here facing a Reds offense that will strike out against righties. But I honestly can't comprehend why this number is up at seven and a half. So for both Rodriguez and Giolito, it is worth noting we are betting against the market here because apparently there have been moving towards the over on both those guys. And betting against the market typically does not go well. However, I've got both these guys projected a full strikeout below, I guess not Rodriguez. Yeah, Rodriguez, I have 5.2, he's 6.5. Uh, Giolito, 6.3 for me. 7.5 is his number. I've got them both projected a full strikeout below their number. So even at minus 144 for Giolito, minus 160 for Rodriguez, I think there is still value in the under. So strikeout props for today, as always, shop around, try to get the best number, identify uh, if there is a book that you can get a better number at. But I've got G lead under 7.5, minus 144. Verlander under 5.5, minus 102. Rodriguez under 6.5 at minus 160. These numbers moving like crazy. So um, as always, survey the landscape and see what you got. If the market continue moves against me, maybe hold off and see if you can get a better number later on. But I don't know why it would. I'm not sure why it did to begin with here for today. That is all that we have for today here on Covering the Spread. Tomorrow, college football is back. And so is Dr. Ed Fang. He'll be joining us to break down week zero in college football, talking about his betting process for college football, how his models work, and stuff like that. You can get that right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Later on this week, Austin Cass back with us. Trying to continue his hot streak in the EPL. He'll be on Thursday. JJ Zach Reason of LateRound.com will be with us on Friday talking some season-long player props over at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across baseball for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some college football. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.